Today I'm with Dr. John McCune. He's the medical doctor, the CEO of Allergy Standards, and the principal of iAir Group. You're a busy man. Well, thank you, Jeff. And it's just wonderful to be back at ISSA. Congratulations on your 100-year anniversary. The energy in the show this year is quite remarkable. I think everybody's really excited about this new paradigm of cleaning for health and wellness. Absolutely. And we want to dig into your expertise a bit. Obviously, the energy here is high, but we want to keep the momentum going. Sure. And I want to ask you this question. You know, it's we are past COVID-19 somewhat. People sure. feel that way. Maybe it's yeah. not true. There's still the effects. People still get it. We built up over COVID-19, the pandemic, the importance of air quality. Sure. And are we losing that? Do you think it's something that we're we're just okay? We're past it now. No, no, I don't. I think I think um, I think the pandemic's past us, and the, the kind of negative connotation of air quality and COVID and that fear is behind us. But I think that that paradigm shift of the we clean now for health and wellness that's not going to go away. And I think that's a it's a great okay. point. Well, I, I I hope you're right, yeah. but. I know we talked about a lot during the pandemic and we got to keep that conversation going. But let's talk about, you know, the ISSA and our members, they clean buildings. They sure. take care of them. Yeah. And obviously we want those buildings to be used. Mm -hmm. Seems to be like there's a lack of um, desire to go back to those buildings. Yep. Those those nice office buildings. Some offices are empty. Yeah. What do you have to say about that? And, and what can we do to help get people back to work? Well, First of all, we have to embrace it. It is the reality. Okay. Uh, I was recently at the Building Owners and Managers Association, and they talk about this flight to premium. There's going to be grade A offices, and there's going to be the rest, and people aren't going to go back to the rest. Um, employers need to have a return on effort to do the commute to come to work. They've got to show there's a reason to come to work, and then if you come to work, that that building is healthy, uh, it's been cleaned and maintained, okay. the air quality is excellent, but you've also got to demonstrate that to people by programs like GBAC, for example. So it's not only doing it is good enough, you've actually got to demonstrate you've done it to, to your co-workers. So what does that look like? I mean, besides stickers on doors or yeah. telling people, what does that look like? Well, it, any initiative has got to come from the top. So it's got to okay. be led by the C-suite. Uh, you'll see some of the biggest companies like AT&T now have a chief wellness officer. So it's now strategic HR. It's no longer facilities, which is changing, say, the washrooms and cleaning floors. It's about how do we attract talent, maintain talent. So facilities management is now a C-suite level. It's strategic HR, and you have C-suite people who are about health and wellness at work. Okay. We obviously, like in this interview today, we're, we're sharing information with the industry. We publish content. Sure. We, we want people to be informed. What kind of training would really make a difference? Because training is, is sharing information as well. Sure. But we need to up the game. What we, does that look like to you? We do, and I'm going to steal from one of the speakers yesterday. He said, but training is what you do with four-legged creatures. You know, education and empowerment is what you do with people. So we need to look at cleaning professionals as people um, and really invest in their professional careers, uh, empower them, educate them, help them ask better questions. And um, so they can actually then do a better job and be paid more, remunerated more, and really elevate this industry and invest in the people who actually were essential serv services during COVID, but now they're essential for quality and strategic HR in this new world we're in. Okay. Last one I want to talk about is your presentation at the Sustainability Hub. Sure. You had a nice little audience there. They were engaged. I yeah. was there watching. Thank you. Uh, what were some big takeaways that they they have that they're going to be able to use from your presentation? Well, first of all, everybody's interested in getting up to speed on sustainability, health, and wellness, but they are confused. There's a load of TLAs out there, three-letter acronyms as STGs, as ESG. So there's a hunger for knowledge, which is really impressive. And they said there was a great crowd there, uh, but there is confusion. And I think it's job of, of trade associations, the ISSA and your related entities to cut through that noise, be a lighthouse in the fog. And you are doing just that. You have the ISA Academy, uh, you have that program on sustainability education, and now you've developed a program on health and wellness and healthy buildings as well. So I would say to keep the momentum going, get involved with ISSA, get involved in their academy and invest in yourself. Okay, I like that. I said that was my last point, but I'm gonna go on a little bit more. So you're a medical doctor. Yes. You, you change professions, this is your passion. Yes. What do you see the future looking like? Five years, 10 years, are we going to have standards of 
of what we need to do, what we must do with indoor air quality in buildings. Do you see that happening? Without a doubt, without a doubt. I mean, the, the research is overwhelming. The, the built environment, we spend 80% of our time indoors. Um, we know that the impact on downstream of health is related to the built environment, and it's not sustainable just to treat, to treat people with tablets and more and more doctors like themselves. Patients want to get involved in staying well and not being sick. So I think you're going to see rise of sensor technologies, rise of wearables, people will be able to measure the indoor environment. You're going to have upskilling of the profession themselves, so they'll know not only how to clean, but they'll know why to clean. And we call ourselves the why guys. Why is it important to live in healthy, well-maintained buildings? Yeah. Well, I know maybe you've been outside, but since I've been at this trade show, I've been inside. Sure. I just hope the air is clean and healthy, sure. but I look forward to the but, time when we know it's going to be. Sure. Well, I have one fact for you. This is, this is not uh, validated, but I don't think it's fake news either. But you'll have to get your, your, re, your li listeners and viewers to Google it. But I believe there's some whales that spend more time out of water than we actually spend outdoors. So wow. we, really, we really have a new paradigm that we live in convention centers, transport, uh, office buildings, and our homes. So yeah, healthy buildings are crucial to our health going forward. Google the wells, and if they spend more time outside than we do. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs>